this is regard this is regarding Jamil Hill, right? Yeah, so this is an interesting one. So Jamil Hill, former ASPN what pundit correspondent. Um she went really hard in the paint for Ken uh, what's his name, Colin Kaepernick, which eventually cost her a job, you know. Yes, those kind of big companies at like ESPN just don't want the drama. I think what we saw with Colin Kaepernick was just an avoidance of drama, an avoidance of spectacle, an avoidance of unnecessary headlines, especially the NFL. I don't necessarily blame them because they have enough bad headlines as it as it is, right? With players, you know, getting convicted of domestic violence, DUIs, fighting in the street, killing people. You know, there's a whole plethora of issues that come out of the NFL. So the last thing they need is, you know, somebody uh, declaring their civil rights or somebody, you know, discovering or walking into their civil rights movement. They just don't want that kind of smoke, unfortunately. Because, um, you know, by all accounts, Colin Kaepernick is still able to play at that level. He still has lots of give. Um, and they made a call that had more to do with the fact that he was bad press and bad PR for the overall um, league as opposed to his actual skill on the field, which is disappointing because a lot of the people that are not, that are kind of convicted of, you know, let's say uh, domestic violence, abuse, whatever it may be, or, you know, maybe have gambling problems or whatever it is usually the rationale is that oh they do the job on the field right so that they don't give a shit what they do outside with him and Colin Kaepernick the stuff that he does outside of his football career or maybe the fact that he was kneeling I don't know has really damaged his purpose of getting back but obviously this whole you know council culture thing has sort of died down with the pandemic happening and maybe rightly so people have other things to concentrate on and may, or maybe just the conversation has evolved somewhat into something of into a conversation where is there some kind of room or is there some kind of place where we can get to where people can maybe re can get rehabilitated as opposed to getting cancelled outright because part of the way part of some people's rationale behind cancelling is that it's a good way to teach somebody because if you take everything away from them that they love and they value or the stuff that they've been told they should value um because of the court of public opinion then they might then see the error of their ways and be like you know what i fucked up i'm not gonna do that again but there's part of me that's like i don't understand why somebody that harbors you know prejudice thoughts on a certain group of people would suddenly have their mind turned or be convinced what they're doing is wrong because you took everything from them and you know put them in a position where they're having to i don't know beg plead and borrow for money or to put food on the table i don't see how they're going to be compliant or agreeable in any way shape or form or ready to do any kind of do it this doesn't make any sense it doesn't really work out in my head too well and i just don't think it works not an effective measure to get people re to, to get people to agree with your side or to change their ways it's just not going to happen but Jamil Hill and these kind of people have a tendency to do all the time and this is just pretty interesting because it's pretty layered so this is from um, Black Enterprise so Jamil Hill calls our New England Patriots draft pick for tattoo linked to white supremacy and this is the following sports commentator and contributor Jamil Hill has issue with New England Patriots and recent draft pick who sports a white supremacist tattoo according to BET. This past weekend during the National Football League annual draft, the New England Patriots selected kicker Justin Rowasa in the fifth round. The New York native was the tattoo of the logo for the Free Percenters, a far-right militia movement and paramilitary group that primarily advocates for gun ownerships and rights, limiting the federal government involvement in local affairs, which to be honest sounds pretty decent, isn't it? I don't really see how that's white supremacist. Again, it might be one of those things about bikers you know bikers don't you know certain bike gangs don't allow people from a different ethnic groups to join them right and then then you have other bike gangs that don't allow other ethnic groups to join them so is there some there's some kind of level playing field there right there's you know biker gangs that have only black people in it mexicans whites whatever right everyone's got their thing cool whatever you're all doing this whole racism thing to each other that's fair then these paramilitary groups that advocate gun ownership and the ones that I'm assuming that do that whole open carry thing and Second Amendment people, right? I don't necessarily look at them as white supremacists. They might be a little bit, you know, neoliberal or not even neoliberal. They might they might kind of skirt on the side of, you know, America first, right? Populism in that regard, but you wouldn't necessarily think they're racist, right? It's that that's the right the conversation gets weird, like is it a racist thing to advocate for the rights of your fellow countrymen not really can it go there probably 
but I don't necessarily think throwing out those kind of accusations of people is the right way to start conversations because that could just be a question that he might because he could legitimately through a conversation you could legitimately find out if somebody has that tattoo through ill intent or just through something that they just you know grew up with in their hometown or whatever it may be there might just be something that they just a part of through friends and family i don't know people get titles of anything these days right it doesn't necessarily mean what they get the title of they 100 percent believe in so i think there could have been opportunity to start the conversation off with a far better footing they're just going straight for the racism and the white supremacist point of view because that does nothing and again what does it do if if this guy what does it prove that they nfl decided to draft this dude and not give you know colin kaepernick a job it just shows that you know again it's what we all have kind of understood this whole debacle colin kaepernick is not in the league because he doesn't know how to throw a football he's not in the league because he's just gonna bring too much drama that's what the it's just what the owners think right so then picking this dude who just has a tail on his arm and says not a word isn't a that big it's not a big a big, bigger surprise so i'm surprised that jimmy hill getting annoyed by it um it's just said the following here he says um he claims this guy i'm sorry that he received a tattoo as a teenager and didn't know the time the logo stood for and has plans now to cover it which is you know a little bit questionable the fact that he's gone throughout his whole life and no one's ever kind of pointed out to him that might look to a different way again it can, it can happen you know what i mean P- people can have maybe he maybe he's got friends around him that are full of the same ilk i don't know and again i think if that was something that he really truly believed in and he went to down that hill wouldn't he kind of fight for his but then maybe not because if you've just been drafted into the nfl right suddenly your life has changed for yourself and your family and you're the prospect of you know securing the futures of your family's family right if you've got a young family that you've just you know you recently married you recently had a kid you're not necessarily going to turn around and you know fight for the right to keep these little free lines on your arm are you really it's not really a thing you're going to do so there is maybe an aspect of like of course he's going to reject it and say it's a teenage prank or something i did when i was younger but maybe he he does still harbor those thoughts but that's the whole point if he does harbor those thoughts still you have to have a conversation you have to talk about it you can't just be telling somebody to get it covered that doesn't do anything right you can tell me not to wear my fucking ku klux klan outfit out in the street and i just don't wear it out in the street but i still got it at home that doesn't mean i've stopped thinking those thoughts so I think sometimes I don't know why they like to do this the counterculture lot they'd like to just like go and just get the person off done get them deleted get them get can get them cancelled but they don't want to they don't want to live in a world where that person can redeem themselves and come back off the other side and be like you know what I was wild in that time and I was going crazy I don't know what I was thinking now I've had this education now I've talked to these people I've been exposed to this kind of you know way of living um, I've seen things a different different point of view, bloody blah, blah blah blah. There's no op- converse, there's no opportunity for that when you just cancel someone straight out. But it continues here, it says um uh local stood for he said obviously it it wasn't something that I don't want to represent and when I look back at it, okay the t- so it's evolved. So I said I should have done more more research before I put my mark on my body. Uh, he said to ESPN to USA Today, so it's not something I ever want to represent, so it will be covered. So I don't know why he didn't cover it before, but anyway, uh, Russell told reporters on a conference call that he will never, that he will cover the logo, which has Roman numerals surrounded by the stars. Russell claimed that he believed the organization for support use registry and got to as a stranger. He wishes that he'd done research. And Jamil Hill here says, here, Patriots kicker is a white supremacist, my bad. He tends to like white supremacist things. Carry on, nothing to see here. Oh God Almighty! A Fred, okay. Of him liking what? Let's let's see what this Fred says about him, because I think the those Fred's always the most incriminating things, and then when they go through all your likes, but again, is is it like a is it like a is it like a illustration of your endorsements, or is it just you just liking shit? I don't know, but let's check it out what he's actually liking. I might make him in more trouble than what he's worth. So, in the post-2016, Justin is playing. And, but then again, this this ain't really going to prove anything because he does admit in the passage that he did think he stood for something else. So, maybe him liking the things that he's liking is just him being younger. I don't know. But let's see. It says 2016. Justin is playing his uh, 3% logo along with a tattoo with live, di- live, or, live or Die Black Polo. What's wrong with live or die? And it continues here. More pics of Justin with the three percent of tattoo. So that's him with the tattoo on his arm. Showing you not showing it off, but it's on his arm. What can he do? Yeah, I don't think that's a big deal really, that one, but hey. 
He's got a tattoo on his arm. He's hanging out. He's doing his thing. Then in 2018, Ross supposed to pick up himself as one of Santa's ho-hos wearing an elf dress. The three percent of tattoo is visible. Well, what's this have to do with anything, though? Justin Washer recommends Jordan Peterson. Oh, okay, now they're being stupid. Because he recommends Jordan Peterson and Jonathan Haidt that he's a bad dude. Nah. I've got Jordan Peterson book on my shelf. I've got Jonathan Haidt book on my shelf. Does that make me a white supremacist as well? This is insane. I've got an Iron, Iron Ryan book as well somewhere around here. Um, Virtues of Selfishness, I think I've got something. This is just insane. And then Iron Rand are both cons- con- no, they're not con- they're not right wing. Well, Iron Rand may be small, so Jordan Peterson no. Jordan Peterson teaches white privilege doesn't exist. Male privilege doesn't exist. Against <laughs> this is in- really simple oversimplification of his point of view, but whatever. And they continue to hear recent Instagram. He posted one day, "I'll be lucky enough to do this for a living," which is what presentation on Jordan Peterson. This is insane. This is what they're pro- arguing about. He liked and retweeted Trump, which is what's wrong with that. This is just insane. Joe Rogan, he likes Joe Rogan. The tweet complaining about gender neutral Santa dismissing an OK sign. Bloody hell. OK, so I guess they just don't like him because he he's on the side of everyone else on social. We've some Candice Owen tweets on here too that people are not fans of. So Stephen Crowder, all the usual suspects people are not giving us so a Dennis Souza. Oh, OK. That's the problem with the left, isn't it? Like, how... <laughs> If you're gonna bash this guy for his tattoo, that might have some, you know, questionable um, meaning or questionable representation. It might, you know, it's not maybe a good look for an athlete to rep- to be supporting a paramilitary group in any way, cyber form, anyway. That could be argued fair enough, right? Especially, you know, with brands and not being aligned with guns and shit. I get it. But to dig up his past and look at the stuff that he was watching in college and the, of, you know, uh, psychologists that he he follows, the public intellectuals he follows, people that commentate on YouTube, it's just not the right way to go about things. Because again, you're getting away from the point. Because he could just be as much looking at those guys as these people on the left, all right? He just be, wants to see a balanced point of view, like people in the US or seen in the Fox News to understand what's actually happening in the world because both of them occupy different spectrums of the political, social um, spectrum, whatever it may be. So he, maybe he's doing that. So Nate, it, it's just it's just a really weird way to try and convince somebody what they're doing is wrong because he's going to cover up the tattoo and start playing again. But if he's harbored any ill will uh, towards a sem- certain segment of the population, why would it suddenly disappear because his tattoo is covered? It just doesn't make any sense, really. It's a really bizarre way to look at things, but you know, again, I think, um, and again, Jamil Hill's whole job, she lost her job off the back of this, right? She really went to down that, come, you know, kind of Colin Kaepernick uh, Hill, and it goes to show how lucrative it is because she had a steady job working at ESPN, you know, um, it's a very lucrative job, a job that people, a lot of people would want, and then she decides to. Well, she didn't. She just no. I wouldn't say she does to fire herself, but she puts up a position where somebody would be, somebody wouldn't be remiss to get let her go because of all the drama that was associated with it. And again, some of the points I agree with. Her. I think she was ultimately treated quite badly by ESPN, but there is a way to kind of like do your activism and still kind of keep a job. I'd imagine, <laughs> but I guess if you're a true activist, you would probably want to be a bit punk about it and really flip tables and you know make everyone's life un- make everyone's life as uncomfortable as it can so you can get your point across right so you can kind of serve your purposes fine no problem but i'm f- thinking to myself her willingness to do so maybe shows that on the other side there is a lot more money there's a lot more notoriety maybe that's what a lot of them want it's not even the money it's maybe just the notoriety you want to be regarded as somebody that fought for you know fought for something apart from just you know commentating on stuff on tv and shit right you want to stand for more you want to be more most of them are like that right they don't they don't just they don't just accepting of being pretty and hosting a tv show they want people to think of them as virtuous warriors in this social justice fight i'd assume so um again i don't know but i just think it's a real bad way to number one a get your point across number two b try and convince somebody that maybe what they're thinking or their point of view is potentially wrong i don't necessarily think so because again if he got a a tattoo of pepe the frog on his arm what does that mean if if, imagine he's just a troll like i don't know it's just some of these things they are just put there just to you know wind up a certain population 
a certain segment of the population and it does a really good job of doing it but then it also destroys people's lives isn't it because what do they want they want this guy to lose his nfl career before he's even kicked a ball because he decided to get a tattoo when he was younger that he represented with and he thought he ascribed it and i changed his mind I'm like come on he's got maths to feed on his side too isn't it there's other people on the other side who are going to be affected by this whole council thing that are nothing to do with it it's just a lack of compassion is really really frightening i think in that respect man that's the thing that only bugs me about all of this especially if he's the one that's being a douche just go towards him why do you have to kind of you know i don't know i don't know 